everybody, it's Tracy at Tearcast um, in the shop here today with Julie behind the camera. And we wanted to um, thank you for tuning in, first off. And if you remember, um, towards the end of September, we did a product launch, our Finishing Touches product launch. And we did a live video at the time telling you guys all about the product groups in the product launch and wanted to come back and do shorter videos that focus in on the little groups. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to tell you guys about the stitch-in components. And the group, the product line includes um, a couple of those components. Our Temple Stitch-in Magnetic Clasp and our Oasis Stitch-in End Link. So um, these products came about because a few years ago we were noticing just not only how popular bead weaving was, but also that there um, were becoming so many um, shaped beads and two-hold beads. And we were also noticing that there wasn't a lot of great options for finishing bead weaving designs. So that inspired us to start really poking at that, and we did a lot of research. We looked at the different kinds of beads people were using, and what came out of that are two new components that were included in the Finishing Touches launch. And one of them is our two-sided Oasis Stitch and Link, and the other one is our Temple Magnetic Clasp. Um, both of them have loops that are configured a little differently than your typical end bar. They're, they're configured so that you can incorporate them right into your design, as opposed to a traditional uh, strand reducer component or end bar that has the loops that would lie flat with if it was if the piece was lying this way. So that means that your thread is hidden. You can attach the the woven design to the end and hide the stitches very nicely. Um, we did do some three loop um, prototypes, but we decided in the end that two was better and they're exactly six, they're, the loops themselves are about the size of a size eight seed bead and they're about six millimeters apart. So we were working with Checkmate's tile beads and wanted to make sure that they would fit those tile beads. So that's how we decided um, on the dimensions and both parts are the same. We really were very inspired and had a lot of other ideas in this group. So hopefully we'll be able to add, add more of these type of components down the road. But to start with, this is what we have. Um, when we were doing some research before the launch, we really, well, during product development really, we really used a lot of different beads to, to test what we were doing. We used size eight and size 11 seed beads and a few different stitches. And we used super duos and various Checkmates shaped beads. They had so many different ones to choose from and also tried them with Tila's and half Tila's from Miyuki. So we really did um, try and use a lot of different things to see how these components were gonna work. When we created designs for the product launch, we we stuck with bead weaving. We wanted really to show people how, how these parts would work with um, stitching. So we did this um, pretty Morocco bracelet using the Temple Magnetic Clasp and Ginkgo beads, as well as some of our spacers and some little seed bead accents. And we created this, um, what did we call this one? The Oasis bracelet. We used tile beads and brick beads, those are checkmates, and with the little size 11 Pico edging with the Oasis, um, the Oasis link. And we also wanted to make sure that people knew that they weren't just for bracelet endings. So we, we used them to create this fun pair of earrings. We used super duos, Zoli duos, and gem duos for these with a little bit of seed bead accents worked in there. So um, we really did have a great time working, um, working with bead weaving. Now after the launch, we also wanted to try it with other techniques. So we created a couple of stitched, uh, sorry, projects just using stringing. So we we did this one. That's Julie's phone going off. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we used uh, Swarovski crystals and some of our own beads for to create this design for, I think it was September, was Swarovski's Psychology of Colors um, program. It was the uh, 
peridot color. So that's what we used for this design. And then this one is just size, uh, size eight seed beads. That was really fun to put together and very easy. So you can see that the parts are versatile. They're not just, um, you don't just need to use them with uh, stringing. Uh, with bead weaving, you can also use them with other techniques, which brings us to um, the demo for today. We're going to show you how to make this simple little pair of earrings. It's just stringing with size 11, uh, size 8 seed beads and the Oasis link, and it's very simple, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I've got for this project is some medium beading wire. Um, I wanted medium rather than fine because I wanted, I want the earrings to hold that hoop shape and I could use heavy beading wire but whatever wire I use I want to make sure that two passes of it will fit in the crimp tube that I'm using so that's a, an important little tip make sure that your wire will fit in your crimp tube so we've also got for the project we've got ear wires jump rings a charm some size 8 seed beads the oasis link and some crimp tubes to get started, I'm just go, I've got uh, my piece of wire is about five inches, and I'm just going to thread one end of that through one of the link loops, and then I'm going to pick up three seed beads. And you know that there can be variation in seed bead sizes, so um, if you find that your three seed beads won't fit um, easily in between the loops. You can actually just take a pair of pliers and spread those loops apart if you need to. So um, these three are fine, they fit right in there. And then I'm going to pull that thread back and, and go through the second loop of the link. And here's where I'm going to put a little stopper. There's wonderful products called bead stoppers, but I couldn't find mine, so I'm using a, I'm just using a little small um, binder clip so that my beads don't fall off. And the next thing I'm going to do, I also have a, a cool little tool to share with you guys. I don't know if you're familiar with Speedy needles. They're a bead along product and they're designed specifically for beading wire. So they come in different, um, different sizes so that you can fit different size beading wire in them. And it makes this kind of work just really easy. They're really nice product. So um, Beetle on didn't ask me to say anything about them. I just happen to really like this project, this product. So the next thing I'm going to do is scoop up 15 seed beads. And this could be, you could, if you wanted to make these bigger or smaller, of course, you could adjust the number of seed beads you use on each side. So 5, 10, 15. And then I'm going to pick up a crimp bead. And then I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to put my little makeshift bead stopper on the other side and switch my needle and pick up 15 on this side. Kim Crawford says it's an adorable earring. Great, thank you. And Debbie Rogers is watching also. Hi, yeah, Debbie. Hi. So, 5, 10, 15. And now I'm just going to thread that other end of the wire, the second side, through that crimp tube that we strung first. Oops, I'm losing one of my ends here. There we go. And pull those snug. And then I will take my crimping pliers and carefully, because I don't want to break a bead, and crimp that shut. And we have, um, we have a nice blog on our new website, and we have videos that cover a lot of the basic jewelry making techniques, including crimping. So you could pop onto our website and go to the blog and, uh, and get some crimping techniques if that's something that you are interested in. 
All right, nice and secure, and I'm going to trim off my extra wire. And the rest is easy. I'm going to use one of these little jump rings. That all looked pretty easy, Tracy. Yeah. Use my little jump ring to attach a charm. I'm discovering that I need stronger glasses. I, I stack two here. <laughs> another technical, I mean, another great jewelry making tip. If your glasses aren't strong enough, stack them. Um, so I've got our charm on, and now I'm going to attach my ear wire. And this is where I want to both, um, this oasis link, as we were saying, is two sides. The designs are different on both sides. This particular little charm is um, also two sided. Um, earlier in the design, you would want to determine if your charm's not two sided, you want to determine which side of the link you want facing forward. Make sure you hang your charm uh, accordingly. Um, but in this case, I do need to decide that when I put my ear wire on. And I like the beaded side, so I'm going to put my ear wire on the beaded side base the front. So there you go. Oh, I'm noticing something, Julie. I made this original one. I used a cooker on that crimp bead just to hide it. But, you that know, I, I don't think that's necessary because the jump ring kind of camouflages the crimp tube, and I think it looks fine. Great. Okay, so that's it. It's an easy project. And first of all, you could use um, small jump speeds, crystals, faceted check fast beads. That could be really fun to play with that idea. So, um, yeah. And hopefully I can get project on the website too, so they'll be down a little will happen this week, though. So, so um, also I'll be teaching this um, project as a make and take at the Oakland Hole Bead Show, which is taking place on, I'm looking at the calendar, <laughs> taking place on November 15th, 16th, and 17th. I will be there at the show on Saturday the 16th, teaching this make and take, including all sorts. So um, if you're in in the San Francisco area, please stop in Hobby Shop. And most of the designs we we talk are available on our website. These pretty mosquito earrings, the Morocco bracelet, the Oasis bracelet, Oasis bracelet, and this I think we call this one the Parado Autumn bracelet. All of these are available on the website with artless and instructions and a download project sheet. This one is brand new. Hopefully we can get that one too. Um, you also may want to check out our blog post about the stitchings on the website. It um, covers much of the material we've covered today and also has links to the project. So it's nice to access to the projects. And let's see. Oh, I want to let you know that the next live video we do will be about the last finishing touch of the group, which is these glue in beaded rope caps, which were discovering are just really a great component. Uh, our next video will be Friday 11th, where we'll be talking about those and doing a demo with this. And if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments of the video. And 